So guys, we all know the piece just dropped earlier this weekend about Tesla's camera quality and its ability to see in inclement weather, whether it be fog, sunlight, glare, or just complete pure darkness. Now, don't get me wrong, this has always been a thing with Tesla ever since they rolled out the original autopilot and has been a greatly exaggerated once they started introducing full self-driving and pushed it out to the entire fleet. At this very moment, there are over 2.4 million Tesla vehicles driving around US roads running the exact same hardware facing the exact same issues. NHTSA has recently opened up an investigation into four crashes involving full self-driving supervised where sun, fog, and airborne dust reduced the camera's visibility and disabled the system. Their preliminary evaluation will assess how full self-driving detects and responds to reduced visibility and if there will be a required fix to resolve these concerns. Now although it sounds like this is blown out of proportion for the majority of us that have tested full self-driving supervised and experienced the very best, it is a very valid concern for those living in places that have inclement weather. NHTSA will now be going through various tests to ensure the safety of the software and the comfort of the passengers so for the time being there is no good in exacerbating the issue it's better to now look at all the bright sides the bright side to this is that we are finally going to get a clear confirmation whether the hardware will have all the abilities and will be truly capable of all weather conditions and in the case that it is not compatible with unsupervised full self-driving what are the solutions that can be provided through software to avoid having to switch out 2.4 million vehicles on the road. Through many iterations of the software over the years, they have managed to remove many artifacts such as minor sun glare, heavy rain, sticky raindrops, and so much more. These have played part in the full self-driving stack, allowing the system to continuously stay active and even one or many of the cameras being blocked or blinded does not affect the entire drive. Now, as for what NHTSA has recently brought up, we are unsure if Tesla has the current software capabilities to avoid encountering these issues in the future, but they will be dedicating engineering efforts into a resolution if it is required. Now, here's going to be another benefit. As we have discussed in our previous videos with Hardware 5 and what it's going to do, essentially, it is the end game for autonomy, the end game chip that's going to be in the car driving the robo taxi so this is going to just accelerate the transition over to this new sensor suite and it's just going to give us a path into the site of retrofit if that's going to ever come to the older vehicles. This would mean that the future models coming off the line will be able to cope with all the weather conditions whether it be a rain, a fog, snow or anything else is going to use hardware and be able to remove that off of the sensors and all of this is not simply just going to be applicable to the full self-driving stack but it's going to be compatible with the rest of the software. This means that traffic aware cruise control, basic autopilot is going to get a really big upgrade after this sensor switch upgrade. Now a lot of people are going to spin this differently based on their own personal experience and their own opinion on the software but truly it cannot be defeated. There is going to be a one time out of a hundred time that you are going to experience this with full self-driving supervised or even with the basic autopilot and it's something that Tesla is going to have to fix this internally. Now generally as an all-encompassing Tesla channel I would try to say as much positive things as Tesla but but as you guys know me, I try to keep it as neutral and as unbiased as possible. And in this case here, I would say that there is still a lot to work on. And there is going to be a lot that Tesla needs to do to full self-driving before the majority can use it as a robo-taxi service. But when it comes down to it, in the end, aside from all the technology advances we have in our car today, what we want is that full self-driving, fully unsupervised, is driving as safely as possible in all weather conditions, in either fog, rain, dust, or snow. This is something that we shouldn't really have to think about and to defend either sides. A few other good points to also keep in mind is through human vision, there are multiple ways to get around certain situations. Things such as pulling down the visor, shield your sun with your hands, squinting and seeing through your eyelashes. These are things that the current autopilot stack is unable to do just yet and through software or hardware retrofits, we can see them replacing human actions. So yeah, regardless of whatever's happening with NHTSA and Tesla at the moment, we can look at the bright side and what we get from all this is that we are fully going to know whether our cars are going to be compatible, how it's going to deal with all weather conditions, and if it's not, what they're going to do all about that. We've actually already been assured by the engineering team during the RoboTaxi event that Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 vehicles 
are going to be compatible with full self-driving unsupervised. So this means that as soon as Tesla launches the ride hailing service and the robo taxi, they are going to launch the version for hardware three and hardware four vehicles on the same stack. So there is no worry there unless they turn back on their words, they are going to have to make it work. And if it doesn't, they are going to need to do something about it, such as providing a retrofit for all the older models. Anyways, in the end, we have just gotten a guarantee that we are going to be hearing this sooner or later. And with Nissa already working on the investigation, they are going to be giving us the clear answer in the next few weeks. This is something we can look out for and see if it matches up with what Tesla has been saying and what the two companies are going to be doing to get it back on order. Anyways, as always, I will be keeping a close eye on this and will be keeping you as updated as possible on everything that goes on. So make sure you guys stick around, hit that subscribe and that bell notification if you haven't already done so. And make sure you follow me on Twitter at HeyJohnE over there. You guys will see the latest and you guys can chat with me and I will respond as quickly as possible. This should be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is John once again. Peace out.